I want to say thank you to everyone that answered yesterday's question openly and honestly. Does knowing that you're a Jew put money in your pocket? And the majority of you, once again, thank you for your well-constructed comments, actually said no. Now, I saw some stuff in the comments that ye exposed who owns Hollywood, who owns the banks. Really, if you're a black person who was born in the United States of America, you know that white people own the majority of institutions. You know that. So that was not some new revelation. That, that, that wasn't no revelation. But once again, I saw some well thought out comments. Uh, whether I agree with you or don't agree with you, I want to thank you for putting the time in constructing your comments. And Israel is not in Africa. Israel is in the Middle East. You can go to the map and actually see that Israel is not on the African continent. It's close, but it's not on the African continent. And what I saw was a lot of people who put a lot of time, energy, and effort into what I would could term black nationalism. Knowing who you are, where you come from, and I'm going to make a statement. I have no clue to my African lineage. I have no clue to what tribe I come from. I have no clue to what you region of Africa I come from. I have no clue to any of that stuff. Would it be interesting to find out at some point? Yeah, could be. But that never stopped me from making money. But what I'm seeing, and this is a lesson here, what you focus on, where your attention is, is where your money is. Years and years ago, when I used to watch The Apprentice, there was this um, woman on there, uh, Lee Sean Evans, she's actually still kind of relevant and famous. And she went to Harlem and her task was to start a business. And she went to Harlem and she was trying to do some community activism stuff and she lost a challenge, which I, I didn't even understand where she was coming from. So this whole collective nation, that notion that if we as black people get this knowledge that collectively we would be better off. Um, I would disagree with that assertion, and I'm going to tell you why. Name one person in the United States of America who does not have access to the Internet. Whether you have a computer or you don't, you have access to the Internet. You have more access to more information in your pocket than your grandfather could ever imagine. I'm from, I remember a time, I am 56 years old. I remember a time that you actually had to go to a place called the library to get information. You actually had to leave your house, go into a building, go to a section of books, find the information you were looking for, check that book out, go home and read it. At no point in history have black people had access to information right now every black person in the united states of america has a ton of access to information ranging from astrology to zoology and once again with all this access where is the collective change we have the access it's everywhere see here's the thing Jews took them many, many years, almost 2,000 years to learn their lesson. Jews were persecuted. Um, in 1927, this is when they came up with this collective anthem, Never Again. And this is when Jews came together and started to galvanize and work together and create communities and institutions. It took them 2,000 years to get to that point. So, 
Jews have in What's going on? My name is Glendon Cameron, and I want to introduce you to the corporate game. What is the corporate game? The corporate game is a collegiate level educational portal that will teach you how to have your best version of your life. I got a question. What would you do if you had the money that you needed to have the life that you wanted to have? And for the average American, an additional $3,000 per month makes a huge, huge difference. So this is the collegiate level corporate game, teaching you things about business, money, corporate structures, business credit, all of that, plus a lot more. Now here is the deal. You can start a business. You can do it with the right level of training and the right level of execution. And here's the thing that you have to understand. Starting this business is going to take time. I know that we are in a situation where every day you're hit over the head with information saying that you can take this course, you can hack this, and you can literally quit your job in 30 days. This isn't that. You can do it, but it's gonna take time. And one of the things is, and this is something that I never hear anyone talking about, is that you have to change who you are to go ahead and to set up a situation where you can become a corporate citizen. And what's a corporate citizen? A corporate citizen is a person through a job or a combination of businesses that makes $250,000 per year. At this level, you can get rich. You can become a millionaire within 10 years following this blueprint. And that's what we give you in the corporate game, what it is and how to play. So if you wanna sign up, if you want to be a millionaire within the next 10 years, go ahead, sign up for the corporate game. The link is in the first comment. An embedded activism component to their religion. Black folks don't have that. How do I say that? Black folks are quick to exile someone black for speaking funny, dressing funny, having a different point of view. How many people have had their black card pulled because they did something to offend, once again, the hip hop ghetto centric part of a Af African American community? If you are speak proper, if you uh, conduct yourself in a certain manner, this offends the ghetto fight segment of African American communities. So, I saw, like I said, once again, thanks for contributing to the concentrate the the uh, conversation. I saw a lot of things, but here's the thing: knowing where you come from does nothing to improve your future life. Does nothing nothing and I saw all these comments like there's this false premise that having this knowledge knowing all of this stuff is going to improve the plight of the average African American in the United States of America once again I just gave you proof positive that every black person has access to this information but they do not have community involvement with this information. This is why years and years ago, I used to, and I still have respect for the Nation of Islam, because literally the Nation of Islam had a collective action plan. They would bring you in, they would clean you up, they would make sure you shave, they would put a suit on you, and then they would give you 
a job. You would go on the corner, sell the final call, start making some money. They had an activism. They had an appearance. They had all of these things that made the nation of Islam extremely strong because the nation of Islam literally transformed the lives of many people. That is what is missing with all of this. You know, like I, I, I'm like, OK, once again, I'm going to say it again. If you're black in the United States of America, you know that white people own most of the institutions. You know this. So, you know, ye expose who owns Hollywood. David Geffen, Geffen Records. You don't even know who that is. David Geffen, he was part of Dream Gilbert, Spielberg, DreamWorks. Geffen, who's a gay white Jew, actually had Geffen Records, sold Geffen Records for $2 billion, joined Steven Spielberg's and uh, the other dude, this created DreamWorks. Once again, to actually say that Ye, Ye, whatever his name is, is sitting around telling people who owns Hollywood, who owns the music company. Come on, give me a break. Give me a break. If you're black in America, you know that white people own more institutions. You know this. You inherently know this because you were born and raised in America. So this this whole collective aha moments like, yeah, he said this and you know, he let people know. How does that information change your life? How does knowing that Jewish white people own banks, Hollywood and institutions, how does that how does that actively change your life knowing this? What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Are you going to stop shopping at these institutions? Are you going to stop patronizing these institutions? Are you going to take your money out the banks? What are you going to do? See, knowing and having access to knowledge is completely worthless without action. And that's what at whole, the black community is missing. Action, activity, activism, doing something, making changes. Just this whole, this knowledge, and this is one of the reasons that I have a problem with the rah-rah section of YouTube. Yeah, he's dropping these gems, gems and rants, gem droppers, all this information. And people are not doing shit with the information. How do I know this? I gave away free business courses and 95% of the people who signed up for this free information that if they had used, they would have created businesses and made money, did absolutely nothing with the information. So that's my whole, my whole point. Black folks are wasting time having these conversations, seeking this knowledge with no action no activity now once again there's the black community has many different segments there is the ghetto fied hip-hop segment of black community which acts as the face of black community but that's not the totality of black community there's a new fraction a part that i'm a part of the progressive black movement which we're growing we're growing there are more people who are joining the progressive black movement. These are people who speak correctly. These are people who involve themselves in the community. These are people who involve themselves in the economy. And there's a lot of black people moving to the progressive black side because they're seeing progressive black folks, big houses, nice cars, own businesses. So that is a small segment of black community of the black community that is growing, that is growing. I've seen significant growth in the last, because there's, there's, I'm seeing black women who are coming on YouTube, who are creating YouTube channels. I'm seeing black men and they're talking about this and it's a different level of conversation because all of these progressive black folks are actually doing something. Whereas the average black person with seeking all this knowledge, you know, getting educated, ain't doing shit with the information. Ain't doing shit with the information. So, like I said,
thank you to everyone that contributed to the conversation. I saw five and six paragraph long comments. People actually, well, you know, whether we agree or disagree, I want to thank you for your participation. And um, I want you to think about this. What are you doing with this information? Or is, you know, because the question was, knowing you're a Jew, how does that put money in your pocket? And once again, to your credit, I'm dealing with civilized, mature adults who's like, it, it ain't put no money in my pocket. It ain't put no money in my pocket. <coughs> we live in the United States of America, which is corporation. To behave and govern yourself in the United States of America, you need to be corporate. I know a lot of people don't want to do that. Uh, they like, hey, I'm leaving America. I'm going back to Africa where and this is another thing. I have some thoughts about the 12 tribes of Israel, the people. I got a question. If black folks were the original Jews, the original chosen people of the gods of God, why did we go through slavery? Please answer that question. If black folks were the chosen people of God, the original Hebrews, the original, where are the blessings? We as a community was ripped from Africa, enslaved for centuries, broken lineage. And then after slavery, we went through Jim Crow. It was oppression, oppression, oppression. Why? Would God allow his chosen people to be raped, mutilated, and abused? Makes no sense to me. Makes no sense to me whatsoever. My thoughts are God is hands off. You are literally born with everything you need to be happy, wealthy, and successful in life. And it's upon you to develop yourself, to pull those talents out of yourself because God is hands off. Just like we're giving the choice to believe and accept God, we're given the choice to believe in ourselves and accept our, our futures. We're given that choice. So once again, this whole thing with Kanye and I will stand by he's a low yeah he's wealthy but he's a low class individual we have historical evidence of Kanye going after people saying crazy shit look at how he was acting when Kim was dating Pete Davidson so this whole notion that Kanye is some type of savant some type of leader he's just a reckless billionaire yes he created music some of the music I enjoyed. He created the Yeezy brand. He's, you know, he's worth billions. He's got money. Okay. Now, if Ye was truly an architect of black success, you know what he would do? He would shut the fuck up and he would get busy instead of being on all. Because see, Ye, he's an attention hog. If Ye, like he has the money to create a black bank. Is Kanye West going to create a black bank? No, he's not. He has the money to create an institution. Is he going to create an institution that benefits black folks? No, he's not. So there is the Kanye who goes on these talk shows and talks all this stuff. But where is the activism? Where is Kanye putting his money? Is has Kanye uh, Robert Smith, a black billionaire, paid for a bunch of students at Morehouse of Education? Is Kanye doing stuff like that? No. So I find it interesting. I find it enlightening that when you look at what Kanye is doing for the black community, it's a big fat zero. Yet progressive blacks like Robert F. Robert Smith and other blacks are doing plenty for the black community. So Look at who you worship. Now, I've never been someone to hero worship someone because they have a lot of money. I look at a lot of other attributes and things before I go ahead and start giving someone my respect and dignity. And at one point, Kanye had my respect. But lately, he's just been a reckless, loose cannon just doing crazy stuff. So, you know. Look at what Kanye is actually doing 
with his money for the black community. And this is something that's really interesting. If you didn't know, Kim, his ex-wife, while they were married, was getting black folks out of jail. Once again, look at what they're actually doing for the black community. Um, look at what Kanye West has done for the black community. Go ahead and put down all of the significant accomplishments that Kanye West has done for the black community. I'll be waiting.